I'm going to weigh this clay that I'm about to throw because if this works, um, I'm going to be making more of these. So that's about 0.81. That's just a little more than three quarters so, of a pound. So we'll see how that works out. Yeah, don't laugh because I'm getting, I'm just getting back to throwing and being out here in the studio. I've had several people in my circle of family and friends, several, and I mean several, more than you can count on one hand. Uh, people pass away into the next life or the next plane or whatever you want to call it. They were very dear to me and a couple of them I took, um, took care of until they passed away. And uh, being a caretaker, I have so much more respect for caretakers and for people who um, work for hospice. The, um, that's just, I don't know, they're just, they're just very compassionate and very sweet people. And they know what's going on and they know what to expect and they're very uh, good at helping people when they don't even know they need help you know when helping people figure out what to do when they're the caretaker and figure out how to help the the person who's in the process of dying but um so I haven't been throwing in a long time because that took a long time. And about the time, well, I shouldn't say they were real close together. But, I mean, if you consider about a year or so close together, about the time you kind of think you have your, your grief under control, somebody else in the family took a turn for the worse. And... And so that required um, more attention away from my normal life. And I'm sure that there are a whole bunch of people out there that are watching this. Ooh, that's got a big lump in it. Now maybe I can throw get past it. Um, I'm sure there are lots and lots of people who, especially in the last couple of years, like for me it's been about three years uh, since the first one passed away, and I'm so sure that I'm not the only one. I'm not alone in this because we all have parents and we all have aunts and uncles and friends who um, who were victims of this this uh, craziness that's been going on for a couple of years. And some of them, I think it was going on before it was announced that we had something going on. So, it's just been a roller coaster, and I wasn't in town the whole time, so I was coming back and forth driving to another state uh, about every other week. And it was a long, hard drive, and part of the time, uh, well, all the time, actually, uh, I have a car that was nearly 30 years old, and I just prayed every time <laughs> that it didn't break down, 
and I took real good care of it. And I'd get the oil changed and all that stuff to uh, make the next trip because when I'd come back home, I knew I was going to be leaving again before long because I was taking turns with uh, someone else. On one case, I was taking turns with someone else being the the person on duty and I get a wobbly bat. So anyway, it's uh, this life in the last few years hasn't been very easy for anybody and um, I'm sure that some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. So what I'm making here I think what I'm making here I just accidentally came across an idea in my own kitchen that I thought would be a good idea for a spoon rest and I'm going to try to throw the shape slow it down just a bit get some water on it it's going to be a little kind of a bowl shape and I'm going to leave enough to uh, make a foot so I need a and I pushed that blob of whatever that was it's probably dried clay or something. It, this is recycled clay I'm throwing with. Let me see if I can get a eyeballs on it and see what I can do about it. No, I don't see it. So what I'm going to do, what I'm doing here is, oh, there it is, it's way down there. I'm going to make a bowl and then I'm going to collar in the, the, the rim of it quite a bit. And as a lot of you know, I'm an artist, a two-dimensional artist, I paint. That's so my formal training is in painting and drawing. I've got um, terminal degrees in fine art, but I taught myself basically how to throw and do pottery because I just didn't get around to it while I was in school, I guess. And so there were so many wonderful classes to take. I'm going to slow that down quite a bit. Now I'm going to get this pretty round. And I'm going to try to get rid of that little blob. That blob is causing my rim to be very uneven, which is not surprising. So this is the first time I've thrown in about two years. I had enough greenware, I mean, not greenware, uh, bisque to do several glaze videos actually so that's where all that came from um, I'm gonna make this bigger than I think it needs to be also because that's what we do so we know it's gonna shrink and I can't talk and do this at the same time. My brain doesn't work that way. But anyway, so so some of you know that I'm an artist and I use watercolors, oils, acrylics, um, whatever, you know, whatever. The, so it depends on where I am and 
If I'm in studio, it's usually oils. If I'm out uh, on site, well, sometimes I take my oils on uh, out in plain air, as they call it, outside. And uh, sometimes I'm using crayons. Sometimes I'm using a pencil. Sometimes I've used a stick to paint with because I forgot my brushes once. And it all works. But I have a little special watercolor bowl little rinsing brush rinsing bowl that I use when I'm doing watercolor in studio so it's a special little bowl and I'm gonna see if I can make one I never even thought about using one of these for what I'm gonna tell you <laughs> here in a minute I never thought about it till just recently it was sitting in on the kitchen cabinet waiting to be waiting to be cleaned out and refilled. And I'm gonna have to cut some of that off because that is just not working out. Sometimes I can throw up. Sometimes if I've got my rim uneven, I can get it pretty close by just throwing it continuing to throw that is and okay i'm getting dirty i'm getting dirty so steady my little hand Now, let's see if we can put that, let's see if we can speed that up. I don't know, whispering seems to help. If you whisper, way better. Now, let me see if I can. This feels really good. I, I really have missed being able to be in the studio and throw because it's so, uh, there's something therapeutic about doing this. And uh, there's something therapeutic about anything that's creative. I can, I can paint for hours and hours and hours and like not even realize that all that time has gone by but i can also do that out here what usually uh interrupts what am i gonna do i'm gonna get a i'm gonna get a uh looking for a, let's see maybe this one Maybe, I don't know. It's either that one or this one. Maybe this one. I don't know, it's one of these. But yeah, baby, I can be way out here and be off in space and and I'll think, oh, it's getting dark. <laughs> I need to go in the house and see if I have any phone calls or 
you know, somebody's hair is on fire, whatever. And um, usually I don't bring my phone out here with me because my hands are wet and I feel like I need the I need to not be interrupted so that I can concentrate. Okay, there we go. We're getting that down there now. I'm trying to keep the wall from spinning out over there. Plus, I'm dealing with that goofy little spot. Now I like that shape. I may come in here when it's a little more dry. And when I was taking care of other people, I, it, it's, sometimes it can be boring and sometimes, you know, it's kind of, you don't have time to think about anything other than the care for the patient, but, um, I really wished that I could have had something like this with me on one occasion I didn't know that I was going to be staying uh, for a long time. Uh, I, I went to visit and see what I could sort of assess the situation and, and see what was needed. And then when I got there, it was like already an emergency. So I just stayed and I stayed for a long time with no trips back home. So I was having to have somebody mow my yard and uh, check on my house, pick up my mail, keep the porch cleaned off from, from you know, solicitations and goofy things like that. Uh, I like this, like this. I, I wish I could get the wall to stick out some more, but I'm probably gonna have to let it dry a bit to do that. So I can probably stretch that a little bit by putting a rib in there. Let's see. This may totally collapse, and if it does, it's okay. This is the first thing I've thrown in two years, in way too long. So I'm gonna push that out just a bit and hope that I don't screw it up. Yeah, that's okay, except my lid, my rim is messed up again. This may not be as easy as I thought it was going to be. Of course, it'd be easier if I didn't have that lump in the clay. And to all you students who, who fight wedging your clay, this is the reason, because having... If you're not a real experienced potter and you uh, and and you um, have lumps in your clay, you might as well just quit and wedge it and start over because beginner students do not know how to handle um, lumpy clay. Some some old pros don't know how to handle it either, but this one seemed to be pretty. Uh, manageable. So now uh, I'm going to take a stick. Okay. So a lot of this can be done with trimming after this. I can, so I'm going to, probably going to go in just a little bit. And then I'm going to be 
I want there to be a foot on this, but I don't want a huge, giant foot. And I need to just take off some. Let's do, let's do this one. This is one of those Sinchun Lin uh, stainless steel tools. I bought these a long time ago and they all need to be sharpened. They're very good and I like them. I like the, the simplicity of them, the no frills, you know. Um, that's fine with me, I don't need frills on something, I just want it to work. And this is a little bit lopsided, but I'm just not gonna fool with it anymore. I'm going to let it dry just a little bit. I'm going to let it dry a little bit. But so what happens on the tool that on the bowl that was in the kitchen? I had a I think I was making something on the stove and I needed to set the utensil down and that bowl was sitting right there so I stuck the business end of it down into the other to one side and let it rest on the other side and I thought dad gum that's a great way to make a spoon rest because if you have any drippy stuff it goes down in there and so you could even make uh, ostensibly you could make a spout on one side of this thing uh, so that you could rest a spoon or a spatula or something into the other side and then if there were drips take the thing and pour it back into the pot no waste right so we'll see how this how this turns out yeah be, better use a sponge let's see here Even better, yeah, baby. The more you can fold that over, the better it's gonna be, I think. So I'm gonna make a couple of these, uh, maybe three or four or five, something, and then we're gonna see which one works the best. I can always change the um, unevenness of this rim. It's just slightly uneven. Probably nobody would even notice, but I do. I know it's there. Um, so, I could take one of these wonderful tools and cut away some more of this. I don't want to make a real narrow foot, <clears throat> excuse me. Because I don't want it to, uh, I don't want it to fall, <clears throat> don't want it to fall over my throat. I can't believe there's there are Bradford pear trees out in this area that are blooming like nobody's business, and they stink. <laughs> I can't stand them. I don't like Bradford pear trees because they're they're a hybrid. <clears throat> And they smell bad when they bloom. They, they're, you know, I wouldn't want one on my property because, my goodness, you, you just couldn't stand the smell. Plus, what's the plus? Oh, the other thing, when you have a hybrid tree like that, they're weak. And we have a lot of storms here. So every time we have a storm, Lots of people lose those trees, and they're ugly when they have been damaged. They're not that great looking when they're not damaged, but they're just not a very, very hardy, I guess you could say. They're not a very hardy tree. So anyway, well, that's my complaint about that. 
Okay, I need to get something under here that's kind of sharp like this. And then I need to quit messing with this so that it will um, harden up, will set up a little bit, and it'll be um, uh, stiff enough that I can fool with it. So, you know, it. they say in art, it takes two people to paint, to make a painting. And uh, so one person needs to do the painting and the, the beautiful artwork and then the other person needs to stand behind them and tell them when to quit because sometimes we just keep working on something and we just don't know when to quit and so that's my problem with pottery as well because I think oh I can do that I can make just one more little tweak and I'll be good you know nah just one more little tweak and it's a pancake after that so okay let's put this on here all right it's just amazing i walked away from the studio it's just i i I'm thank God that I could do that, but I just walked away. I just put everything down, walked away. When I came back, of course, during the winters, my water was frozen and it was just cold as it could be. I did put a cover on the air conditioner so that it would, you know, just to keep it clean and everything not have any rust in there during the uh, winter. And and everything was just like I left it. All of the bisqueware had been taken into the garage for firing, and uh, it was all in there still when I came back. And everything was just where I left it, so it felt really good. Let's see, I had almost three quarters of a pound on that other one, so let's check this and see. Whoops. Let's see what I got here. I can probably make a bigger one. That's 70. Let's see, and that's 82. That's going to be about the same size as that one. So let's make a bigger one. Let's make um, a one pounder. Let's put some. There's 98, let's put a little extra for, there's 1.3, or 0.03, excuse me. So, let's do that. That'll be like 70, well it was actually 80, so we're gonna, after you take off some, you know, for the bottom and everything, it's more like 75, so. So that'll be three quarters of a pound, this'll be uh, one pound. And we will see how that goes. I broke my piece of party board, party backer board, this stuff. And I have these two little pieces and two pieces. Of, so these little ones are really two small to use here and the bigger ones are too big to use over here so I need to go get another piece and have it cut so I like it but that's what I use instead of plaster of Paris to do my wedging on because I have to move stuff around in this studio I can't I don't have a big place for a space for a uh, wedging table. That would be nice, but I really just don't have room for it. And it's a little crowded in here as it is, but it works. Whoa. Okay, that was done. All right. Make a ball.
Yikes. Boy, it is windy today. I thought we were having an earthquake a while ago. Um, I was in the house and all the rafters in the roof started creaking. It sounded like it was going to take off. Isn't it amazing how you can be away from this for a while and your hands just remember what to do? It's as though I never left it. Whoops. Twisting it off right there. So let's stop doing that. My hand is in this. This is speckled stoneware, I think. I've pretty much gotten rid of all the other type of stoneware. And I really like this spectacular clay, probably my favorite clay in the stoneware, the brown stoneware category. It's so much easier to throw this piece, and I'm not sure why, but uh, probably doesn't have a lump in it for one thing. <laughs> Maybe it's because it's my second one. And it's bigger, and I think sometimes it's easier to throw big stuff. People make little bitty tiny miniature things for doll, like doll tea party set, tea sets and things like that, goofy little things, which is fine. I mean, there's, gosh, there's definitely a market for that. Um, every little granddaughter wants one, right? Let's see if we can. Okay, now we need to slow down because I can't control it when it's going too fast. That may even be too fast. Okay, now I'm going to need a bigger rib here. Now the inside of these bowls for this, for watercolor anyway, needs to be pretty, well, needs to be pretty smooth. I might be able to fix that, let's see. Nope, because it's, it's a mess. Rats. There's a recycle for you. That one's got to go to back to the um that one will have to go back to the bag and we will re-wedge it and that'll be that when it flops like that you're done what happened there was i had it going too fast when i was trying to shape it and i got a thin spot and that's what did that Okay. Okay. Squish, squish, squish. All right. 
I'm going to put this on this piece of hardy board so that it can dry out a little bit. And that way I can redo it sooner. I think everybody, everybody that has a studio or everybody that goes to a studio to throw, the biggest thing <laughs> is not having enough room to put stuff. <coughs> Limited. I mean, there'll be somebody in, at the wheel right next to you or somewhere close where you can't, you know, horn in on their space. Or it's just too, too little and you just don't have enough flat, empty space to put things. But we manage, don't we? We deal with that. After the last couple of years, most of us can deal with about anything, right? We've been through the testifier, basically. Well, I, for the first pot, I didn't do too bad if being away for so long, right? I think. And there's an applause for that. Yapping, clapping. The sound of one happy, happy hand clapping. All right. Get some more clay. That's a pound and a quarter. So I think I'm gonna take off that quarter pound and see what happens. Where can I hang that? I know it's just begging to be hung up somewhere. That's 1.9. Let's take off some more. One point. Let's take off. There we go. That's good. Thank you.